hello everyone. How wonderful that so many of you could join us this afternoon for our Wiz Maths Extravaganza. So today we are going to um, do some fun activities for about 40, 45 minutes. But before we even start, I'm going to say hello. My name is Fiona Goddard and I'm one of the educationalists at Wiz Education. I have a colleague with me and I'll let him introduce himself. Hello, I'm Ben Slack, um, and I also work for Wizard Education in the ESB department, so working with schools um, to help you with your maths. I'm very excited to uh, work on this extravaganza with you. I believe um, one school I know for sure, we've got the Royal Liberty School with us, so that's, um, that's exciting. Welcome. Brilliant. So... What's going to happen this afternoon is that we're going to go through, through some exciting activities with you. Now, you may want to try them do, do them with us, but it can be a bit rushed. So what I would say is sit back and enjoy and maybe chat with your friends about what you think maybe some of the possible answers will be. And then we've got the chat and we'd love you to just put anything, any uh, responses you want to put, put them into the chat and then we can, that will help us because we'll be able to see the chat and see what your answers are, see what you're thinking. You won't be able to see anybody else's chat. We can see everybody, you'll just see your own chat. So that just, otherwise it can become a bit overwhelming because there's so much chat quite often when there's such a large group of people. Um, as I said, it's gonna be about 40, 45 minutes and everything that we do today will come to you in a handout. So you have lots of opportunity to actually do this in your own time, maybe after the session as well, because I'm sure there are going to be quite a few things that you'll want to have, have another go at. So whilst we have been waiting for everyone to arrive, we had a, a little challenge on the screen for you, and we wanted you to estimate how many. So I'm sure you've all been chatting about it. So if you'd like to maybe start putting your responses in the chat now, that would be great. So when it's an estimate, it doesn't have to be exact, does it? And I don't think with a lot of these, there is a, a real exact answer, okay? So just estimate how many polar bears do you think are left in the world? How many times, this is my favorite one, how many times per second do you think bees flap their wings? Or how many stripes on a tiger? Lots of, lots of things to have a go at guessing at. So I'm gonna give you a couple of seconds to have a go and put your answers in the chat. What do you think, Dan? Have you got some... Well, some well, well yeah, I, I think they're all really getting me thinking, but the next question that I ask myself is, which number is the biggest? Because then I started thinking, mm. there are so many leaves on a tree, but actually just looking at the face of that parrot, that must be a very large number of feathers. Um, I think the, ti the, the, the tiger and the, the turtle those numbers might be quite low, but that could surprise me. But yeah, no, I, I start to think about um, which might be the biggest number. So what size numbers are you thinking of then, Ben? When you say biggest number, what, what even is that? Well, I, I used to know how many leaves were on a tree because I think that looks like an oak tree as well. And they're particularly, they're particularly um, uh, well condensed with leaves. So I definitely think we're in the, I think we're close to the millions with that one. Oh, okay. Wow. Really good numbers. I could, I could be wrong. Okay. We're getting responses coming through now. Lots of them coming through. Um, so let's have a go. So we've got some of you that think the bee flaps their wings 10 times per second. Fiona, could, could you flap your wings 10 times per second? Do, do you want, <laughs> oh, you're not going to try. <laughs> oh, could, no way. No. I mean, a second's just gone, isn't it? So, I mean, 10 yeah. times seems too many. But I've got, oh, some people are saying maybe 80 times. Some going past 100. Oh, we've got some responses coming through with the turtles as well. But let's think about the bees first. What do you think then, Ben? What do you think the answer might be? I, I think so 10 times per second. I, I, I think that's a pretty good guess, but I think nature is just pretty amazing at times. So I'd, I am thinking maybe a bit more. Yeah, do you know what the answer is actually? Obviously, I don't know if they really know the answer, but around 200 
times wow. per second. Per second. That's incredible. No wonder you don't, it's just a buzz, isn't it, when you see them fly by? That's probably why you hear them as well, because of the, the wings moving so quickly. Okay. If, any, if anyone's feeling really, really smart and switched on, if it's 200 times per second, how many times is that in a minute? Oh, lovely. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I have to think now. <laughs> I th I'm going to move on. What about the, um, now the turtle's an interesting one. Um, so someone's put a thousand eggs. I've got others that have put in the hundreds. So some really good guesses, some really good guesses. Um, I don't know if you've seen the documentary documentary where you see turtles coming out of the sea they go up the beach and they lay their eggs in the sand and then when they hatch there's this mass exodus where all the baby turtles are trying to get back to the sea um, and obviously unfortunately nature takes its course and some don't quite make it back so they do lay a lot of eggs because of how nature is but it's not quite a thousand I think it's around yeah, it's around 100, about 110 eggs. Now that's each time and they can actually lay nests up to two to eight times a year. So I guess a thousand eggs in a year is probably a, a, a good guess. Um, mm. So yeah, well done. Okay. What were you said about the oak tree, Ben? Yeah, how, how far away you? was I? <laughs> well, let me have a look. I'm just having, do you know, I can't remember all these numbers. Well, I think probably a bit too far. I've got here 200,000. But quite a big number, all, quite a big number, all the same. I suppose it depends on the size of the tree, Fiona, and how old the tree is, maybe. Absolutely, yep. yeah, absolutely. I do know I've got a lot of trees where I live, and when it comes to autumn, there's an awful lot of leaves that fall on the floor that we have to pick up. So I can believe it is in the uh, hundreds of thousands. Okay, but what about polar bears? Any guesses with the polar bears, anyone? Sadly, I think this number might be quite low. Yeah. And I did you know what? I, I, I don't know a number when it was a really healthy population, but there's uh, this fewer. This is what scientists estimate. Obviously, and this is all over the world. This isn't in one location, but they think probably about 26,000, which sounds a lot, but it's not really, you know, and we, we know because of everything that's happening with the climate, they're becoming more and more extinct well the numbers are certainly getting it lower so yeah that's a really sad fact that one um what about the tiger did you have a go with that one ben um well i'm looking at the picture of the tiger my estimation would be let's say maybe 50. 50. so was there any particular way you worked that out um i looked well i'm just kind of guessing essentially which is the whole part of the game the tail has a few as well which yeah. I didn't spot initially um I think look just looking at the middle of the body I can see at least kind of 10 10 stripes maybe a touch more so I kind of applied that to the rest of the body and then I've, he's probably got he or she the tiger's probably got a few on his face so maybe something between 50 and 100. Well they, they reckon about well, oh, just over a hundred. So very good guess. Well done. Yeah. I hope you're all guessing like this at <laughs> school or at home as well. Um, okay, we've got two more. Um, or I'm just looking at the time. Maybe we should leave those for you to have a go at another time um, with the icebergs and the African parrot. Um, oh, tell me, tell me the parrot quickly. So okay, the African parrot. Let me just quickly, I've got to find it on my notes. Now, obviously, this is the parrot depending on the size of the bird and the type of bird, um, it can vary, but about 8,000 feathers. Wow. And that's because obviously they need them to keep warm, but they also need them for flying as well. So, um, so yeah, a lot of feathers. <laughs> so, okay, that's great. Now there's a reason why we've been showing you all of these pictures today, it's because a lot of us know, and we've heard it in the news, and I'm sure maybe we've been doing things in school as well, that, We've got a few problems with our um, with our world because of the way in which, as humans, we've been behaving. And maybe sometimes we haven't been thinking more carefully about how we can look after the environments that we live in. And we know that climate change, we hear it on the news a lot, 
means that you know everything's heating up slightly which is then causing knock-on effects for all of our nature you know with the polar bears losing their ice um, their icebergs to be able to roam around on we've got the icebergs there as well and of course forests where trees are being knocked down so tigers don't maybe have the space up to go into those those areas the same with the the um, African parrot as well, you know, and the pollution in the seas affects all the turtles. So there's so much um, that's going on um, just from some of our behaviors with, with how we've been um, using things like fossil fuels and it's been causing all this um, uh, pollution in the air and things like that. So we thought, do you know what? This summer, we're going to have a look at building for a greener future. We want just for you to be more aware of the environment that surrounds you. So I'm just going to move to the next slide because we have got a summer challenge this year. So I'm going to do a quick um, ad, 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 uh, advertisement for this. So we have got eight mini projects all linked with the environment, which you can either do in school or you can do at home. And it's all just helping you think about what you're doing and the behaviours. Um, when I say behaviours, it's like, what do you do with your rubbish? You know, um, and, and things like that. So this challenge is lovely. They're just mini projects. You could just do one little activity or you could do it all. So it's really quite flexible. And we want to make people more aware because the um, evidence is showing that if we carry on living like we are by the year, 2100 so what we are now we're 2022 at the moment so how many years time is that you can start to do the maths um they reckon that maybe an estimated 50 percent of all the world species could go extinct because of climate change now that makes me very sad and i hope it makes you very sad as well particularly from those pictures that we've just seen so so yeah, so we just wanted to make everyone more aware. Now, just seeing some things come through from the chat, you're right, that's only 78 years time. So for most of you watching this, you could still be around by then. I don't think I will be, but you will be. So, you know, it could be in your lifetime that you see all these changes. So it's really important we know that we need to, to be proactive and do something to really help out. So that's the theme of our session today. And Ben's got a really lovely activity to do with you now. Thank you, Fiona. And you can you can sign up for, if you haven't already, you can sign up for the summer challenge by just going on our website. Um, and it's pretty, pretty clear that to kind of register your interest and all the materials will be sent out to you. So um, okay, we've zoomed in, we've zoomed in on some objects, some things maybe animals and we're looking at the shapes that we can see so shapes are pretty much everywhere in nature can we name the shape so they're numbered you can see one two three four all the way up to 12 can you name the shape that you can see and then also have a pretty good go at guessing what it is that we've zoomed in on so we really need the participation of you guys in the classroom right now, um, because I want you to be thinking much, much harder than what I am. So the first one, number one, top left, the yellow and black um, sh shape. What shapes can you see um, within that object, first of all? Well, coming through on the chat, Ben, they're saying number one is a hexagon. Yeah, we've got hexagon, well done. Um, well done, Nick, I believe that's from Millfield School. That's brilliant. So a hexagon, yes, indeed. Now, what is the shape that we've zoomed into? Do you know, I have it every morning for breakfast. Yeah. yeah well done, yes, absolutely. So honeycomb and obviously a little bit of a link with the bees there. So that's, um, that's a little segment of some of the honeycomb that bees produce. Right, moving on to number two. This is my favorite one, I think. So what shape can mm. we see, first of all? Now, we've obviously seen what we call a regular, a regular shape in the first one. So we've got, correct, we've got the object, it, it seems, um, coming through on the chat. Unless I've got it completely wrong, Fiona, that is a giraffe. It is a giraffe, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think the shape's more difficult though, isn't it here? So I wonder what we would call those shapes. Yeah, so we're looking at kind of an irregular shape, really, yeah. aren't we? Because it's absolutely. 
and we might discuss what the difference is irregular and and regular so how many sides does that shape on the giraffe's hide one two how many sides can you see i can see well one two three four five depends it could be seven i can see in that big shape so, yeah so absolutely i've counted some that are five what would a five-sided shape be I feel like that's one of the trickier ones. Yeah, someone's just said pentagon. Yeah, brilliant. Yep. Well done. That's that's fantastic. So there's some irregular pentagons in there. There's also, as Fiona says, there's a seven sided shape out there. Now, I wonder what you would call a seven sided shape. Spot mm. on. It's just come in. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a. Uh, it's a heptagon, isn't it? Septagon. Septagon, yes. Yeah. Well done. And there's also, obviously, there's some hexagons as well. So, that, so yeah. there's a mixture. There's no real, I think there is, obviously, there might be a pattern, but generally, they look like very irregular and there's a bit of a mixture of shapes there. So moving on to number three. How would we describe that shape and what do we think? What do we think the object is? Do you know, when I've done this before, there have been two shapes mainly that have come up here for this. And that is, um, yes, someone's just put irregular hexagon. Well done. Absolutely. Or the other one that's come up, which I uh, see on some of them, um, that's a, is a rhombus. Yep. So maybe we're just seeing four sides rather than six sides. So. Uh, yeah absolutely what do we what do we think the shape it what do we think the object is then no i'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to be honest it's not my favorite at all no it's they've got it they've got it in millfields it's it's, <laughs> it's it's a snake well done um right okay moving on to number four uh, one of my favorite animals this one first of all let's have a you can start to kind of Beat me to it before I ask the question. What's the animal? What's the, what's the object? What's the shape? So we've obviously got some nice brown colours in there. Should be looking to count the sides. Yeah, I think yep. it, oh, tortoise has just come through. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Turtle. Yeah. And we're looking at another hexagon, aren't we? Yeah. Generally. Okay. Moving on to number five. That's interesting. Fiona, you might need to help me with what on earth. That is to be okay. fair. Okay, okay. You'll find this in Ireland, Ooh. and um, it's totally made from nature. Okay, but it looks like someone's put a load of painting slabs down, and it's just like that. It's called the giant courseway. So I've oh, given wow. you the um, uh, yeah, I've told you what it is. But don't you think that is amazing that that is? And how they're all different heights as well. It's yeah, yeah very interesting. So yeah. that said, that's a kind of um, a natural phenomenon in Ireland. That's very interesting. Right, yeah, number I six. It's through the Ice Age and through um, earthquakes and the earth moving that's caused that to happen. So, um, yeah. Brilliant. Right. Yeah. Number, number six, I think, is very familiar. Um, what suggestions do we have for number six? So I said tree. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And what is it? What is it made? What shapes can you see there? I think you could possibly see a few shapes, but there's one main shape that um, that makes up. Yeah, circles tree. coming through, Ben. So yep, yep, tree rings as well. That's good. Number Ooh, seven. Someone, someone just said concentric, concentric circles, which is um, brilliant. Which is lots and lots, isn't it? But they're all different sizes, so that looks well, really good. Yeah, that's also a way of finding how old a tree is, isn't it? When you when you look at the the rings. Um, right, number seven, my least favorite picture. <laughs> um, lots of different shapes in there I believe that one is cabbage it is yeah, yeah. Um, number eight this is a really hard one actually yes it is I might just leave that for you to have a have a I've think. actually seen this in Cuba growing is it is it an animal or a plant it's a plant um, but if anyone knows it, that's incredible because well, we just had we just had through the shapes a spiral, which is quite in yeah. interesting. Spiral pattern, yeah, absolutely, yeah. No, I think if we've got any kind of key stage 
key stage two children listening, if you could think about, if you knew anything about the Fibonacci sequence, that would be very, very clever. That's linked to that. Um, what is it then, Fiona? It's aloe vera. And aloe vera can be a drink or it can be a, a healing um, moisturizer cream that you can put to help any um, any scars and wounds that you have on your hands or on your body. So, so yeah, it's um, it's a plant that it's obviously full of full of moisture, isn't it? Full of moisture, yeah. And then number nine, something that should never go on pizza, <laughs> although some people do like it. That's that's a that's a pineapple, and that looks quite like a, a circular shape as well. But there's also there's an interesting uh, tessellation in there as well with yeah. another type of shape, isn't there? It looks almost like a um, trapezium yeah it does yeah now i'm wondering looking at the time then whether mm. these are in the handout so they can have a go at guessing the rest of them and maybe Absolutely. They move on to the next activity so. okay right we, let's move on then so right have a little uh, shake out get ready to contribute again i'm looking forward to your thoughts on this um it's time for you to really really think now you've got four shapes uh a yellow a blue a red a green and my question to you is which one is the odd one out? There's no right or wrong answer. I'm just interested in your ideas. So which one do you think the odd one out is? And then what would be lovely is if you have some sort of explanation. So I'm hoping that um, I can- No, I'm see. gonna reveal the names just to see if that- Yeah, good idea. So I know for sure that we've got Royal Liberty School here, Millfields and Garfield College. So children, get ready. It'd be lovely to hear who you, who you feel, which shape you feel is the odd one out. What would be your first, first um, thoughts, Fiona? You know, I was just thinking that I'm going to start it off. I'm going to say the rhombus is the odd one out because it's the only shape that we can see that's got two sets of parallel sides. Right, yeah. I would say they're all, they're all primary colours, aren't they? I was gonna go a bit more basic. With colour? No, we're looking at the shapes, Ben. <laughs> oh. I would say, I would say the odd one out. Hmm. Well, I might might want to like initially. I thought of picking two, being the hexagon and the triangle, but I know that I've got to pick one because the other two have four sides. I would maybe say, um, I would maybe say the hexagon because it's got more than four sides. Well, there's a good one that's just come through saying the triangle because it's the only one with the odd number of sides. I like that one. Ah, very good. Because a hexagon has six, rhombus has four, trapezium has four. Yeah. So that's good. Any other, any suggestions? It'd be lovely to hear a few more. That'd be great. We keep talking about sides. I wonder if anyone can tell me anything about the angles. That would be good. Maybe even odd one out because of something to do with the angles. Well, I'm looking at, I know, I know the angles of the triangle. So the, the angles, the three, the three angles, oh, we've got a good suggestion there. Three angles in a triangle are, um, they add up to 180, don't they? Yeah. Is that right? So it's 60, 60, 60. Um, right, we've got from um, Brilliant, we've got a really good suggestion there. So blue is the odd one out as it has no lines of symmetry. Very good, that's, that's a superb suggestion. Yes, yeah, so it'd be interesting if I was to say, how many lines of symmetry does a triangle have? Mm. Um, but yeah, rhombus, no lines of symmetry, that's correct. Um, triangle as it's less than 360. I think we're talking about the interior angles there, yeah? Yeah, I've, 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 I thought that when I read it. So. Yeah, that's really good. Um, green has no parallel lines. Absolutely. It's a really good point. <laughs> and, then, and then we've got triangle, not a primary colour. Well done. 
that was, that was off the back of my thinking, I think. <laughs> now, I wonder, is, shall I show them the angles? Yeah, please do, yeah. I've got something, you could, this will be on your handout, so you can actually go to this site. But this is a really nice site to be able to look at shapes and their angles. So I've got the four shapes that we've just been looking at. And if I move, let's start with the hexagon. So there we go. So if we're trying to find out what the interior angle is. Obviously, looking at it on the angle measurer there, we know it's greater than 90 degrees. So in the chat, I don't know if you want to have a little guess what you think it might be um, and what we call that type of angle. But if I take it round, you can see, oh, I need to be a bit more precise, don't I? Come on. Oh, dear. This is me with my wobbly hand. There we go. So the interior angle of a hexagon is 120 degrees, which we call, it's coming through on the chat, well done, we call an obtuse angle. And if I actually spin this round, hopefully you can just see each, oh, sorry, quickly I'll find it again. Apologies for that. If I, there we go, you can see each angle is 120 degrees. Okay, so keep that thought. And then if I, let's go to the trapezium. Now, trapezium's got two different angles. We've got the angles here, and we've got the angles here. They're different. So if I move our angle measure, so this is an acute angle. It's 60 degrees. And if I spin this round, get a bit of echo, Ben. I don't know why that is sure if other people can hear it. And then if I move the trapezium to then look at the other angle, what do you think it's going to be? So it's 120. Now, remember I said, keep things in your head about the hexagon. Now think about the trapezium. I want you to start thinking about maybe what is the link between these for shapes. Let's quickly have a go with the rhombus and that slots in there and we can see 120. And if I move it around to the other angle, what do you think that's going to be? It's not going to be 120 because if I place it there, we can see. So I think I'm going to hear you all shouting what the angle is. It's going to be 60. Hmm. Are we starting to see a connection? What about our equilateral triangle here? If you already know about an equilateral triangle, you'll know what the angles are, and they are 60. So, interesting. So the angles are either 60 or 120, and the link between 60 and 120, have a little think about that as well, because we're going to go and play a game now, and it's really helpful that our angles in the shapes that we're going to be using actually have something in common. So let's let's go to our game. And do you want to, do you want to explain the rules, Ben, first, and then I'll go to the... Uh... Oh, Ben, you're on mute still. Last, oh, are you back? I'm back. Ah, great. <laughs> so um, the aim of the game is last shape wins. That's right, Fiona? It is, absolutely. Okay, so we've got a bit of a blank canvas of, uh, of a shape over here that's obviously full of triangles. And our job is to essentially move over different shapes and slot them in to the master shape, as it were. So what are we thinking about when we're playing this game, Fiona? Well, I, that would be giving away, um, oh, sorry, let me just quickly move my screen to this one. That would be giving away my um, my strategy, wouldn't it? But what oh. the, the idea is they must touch. So when I go to place one on, it must touch um, one of the, uh, the previous shapes that have been placed on there. So that's quite key. Okay. But otherwise, I don't know, it, 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 does the person who plays first, are they more likely to win or should I go second? Um, do you use shapes that are going to take up more area or do you use smaller shapes? I mean, there's so many different strategies here. So 
Well, Fiona, I'm going to go first, just okay. because I'm, I've decided. So, not much thought involved there, just thinking the biggest shape, I'm going to put it right in the middle. Well, do you know, I like your train of thought, so I'm going to do exactly the same. And I'm going to make sure it touches the shape you've just placed. Oh, I'm so sorry. There we go. And there it is. Okay, in contrast, I'm going to go a little bit smaller. Okay. It looks a little bit like a, a crayon. Right, you know, I'm going to stick with big shapes. I don't know if I'm going to regret this, but I'm going to use another hexagon and I'm going to place it there. Okay. Right. I already, something jumped out at me there. Okay. Now, I'm wondering if I could work this out. One, two, three, four, I can see. I've already worked it out. I have you. Well, I'm going to throw a spanner in the works. I think <laughs> I'm going to move my rhombus and I'm going to place it there. Oh, not placed it very well. Uh, there, there we go. Right. Over to you. There's not many left. You can almost start to plan each move ahead. You don't know if they're going to go. Ah, oh, okay. Going for a rhombus as well. Right. So if I play, I'm just thinking ahead. If I play a trapezium now, then you play triangle. I play a triangle. So you could play. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> oh. I'm Excuse having to really, I'm having to really concentrate here. <laughs> Thinking about shapes and numbers. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to place a triangle there. I think I've still, I think I've still lost. <laughs> okay, so I think that was that was Fiona's dog just jumping in. Hopefully, she'll still be able to play her move. So let's think about how many possible goes there might be left. So it could be Fiona, then myself, then Fiona, then myself, and I would win. So it looks like, because there's only one shape more available, it looks like if Fiona has to play a triangle, so I'm going to be Fiona. You have to play a triangle. That's Fiona's go. I'm, right. playing, for, I'm playing for you because it's, it's just inevitable, the outcome. Okay. So this was your move here. Yeah. I'm then I'm then playing there over to you. Oh, I tried so hard. I'm going to blame it on my dog. <laughs> you had already lost by that point, Fiona. Oh, has I? Oh, I've chosen the wrong shape there. Rather than twist the list, choose the <laughs> Sorry, just going to use that. There we go. Okay. There we are. And and then the last shape, the last shape wins. So in we go. So that was a that was a really, really fun. Game. Yeah. And the reason it worked is because the angles in those shapes that we were using were either 120 or 60 degrees, which meant that we could what you call tessellate. So we could actually fit the shapes together. I know it looks like there's a gap, but actually if I'd have placed it properly, there'd be no gaps, no overlaps. And they all just fit nicely together. And uh, that's what we're going to have a look at now. So I'm going to show you some more pictures. And what do you notice here? So we've got lots of different things. Some of them are um, photographs that are taken outside of pavement or bricks. And if you notice here, it's just like the game we've played. All the shapes fit together with no gaps. Now, some of them are are quite regular in shape and others are quite irregular. Um, but because they fit together, it's called tessellation. It's called tessellating. And I've got some more pictures to show you here. I don't know if you've been some places, they have it in um, different buildings. It's amazing. It almost looks like a mosaic where all the, the, the um, shapes fit together. And then on the right hand side of your screen, there's two really good pictures. And I love this one on the top right because Ben when you look at that picture what do you say? I see an angry dog. 
Oh, do you? <laughs> you I see, do. now, when I look at that, I first of all see a cat. I don't know what you all see um, when you just looked at that. Um, but isn't it clever how they've got a cat and a dog and it's actually tessellating? But it's very irregular, not like the shapes we've just been using. And it's the same with the um, butterflies as well. Now, I don't know if you've heard that the artist called Escher did a lot of work with symmetry um, and with perspective. And he's done, I would say thousands, probably not thousands, but hundreds of pictures. And there's a few examples you can see on the screen here. Now, it's really clever because if you look really closely, if you look on the left, it's some kind of um, sort of gecko, sort of um, chameleon lizard. thing, lizard. Absolutely. If you look in the middle, I can see a fish and then it's a frog. And then there's on the right hand side, um, a fish all just at different angles. So it's really, really clever. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun if we could do something like this? So if we could make a tessellation, but with a fun, irregular shape. And I'm going to show you how to do it now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing and I'm just going to pin myself so you can see me. Um, so spotlight for everyone. So hopefully you can all see me. And I'm gonna move this down so you can see my desk in front of me. Okay, right now, all you need is a square piece of paper, pencil or a pen, up to you, what you want to use, a pair of scissors and a bigger sheet of paper that I'm going to use in a moment and some sellotape. And what you do is it must be square, okay, which means obviously all the sides are the same um, size. And then it, it, you can be as creative as you want, but the rule is you must go from one corner across to the other corner. That's the only stipulation, but what you do in the middle is totally up to you. Now I've already just done some pencil lines to, to follow, but there we go. So you go from one corner to the next, and then all you do is get your scissors, and if you're not very good at cutting out, you need someone to, to help you with it, then obviously ask for some help, is I just cut very carefully along the line that I have just drawn. Um, it doesn't matter if you go over the edge, you're just the important thing is to make sure you go from corner to corner. Now I'm doing that last bit so carefully because what's really important now is obviously that this is the puzzle bit that fits in there. But when I move this, I mustn't change its angle where it's going, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it over to here so that this side here now goes along this side here. So I then do that and then very carefully with my sellotape, Get this. Okay. I'm going to join it together. Oh dear, there we go. So we've got a bit of a hair there as well. There we go. So that's one side. Now to make it more interesting, I'm going to do exactly the same. You could do all four corners if you wanted to, but I'm just going to do the same there. So I've gone from corner to corner again, slightly different shape this time. And now I'm going to cut. So going from that corner, there we go. Now I've got to remember, once I get to that corner, be careful because now I'm going to move it from there. So this side here is going to touch this side here. So move it to there. And then once again, get my sellotape, stick it together. There we go, perfect. So there we have my irregular shape. Now what's so exciting about this, which I absolutely love, is that you can now make that whatever you want it to be. So you need to have a look at your shape and just try and decide what does it look like? But it might help if I get my piece of uh, A4 paper that I've got here, I can place it wherever I want. And what I'm going to do is very gently, or carefully, I should say, not gently, I'm going to draw around the shape. And I'm gonna show you how it tessellates there we go, I'm doing it quickly, so I'm not being as careful as maybe I should. Now, can you see if I move it here, this now fits in there. So then I have to draw around that, oh dear, draw around that again. 
And then just to prove that it does tessellate, I can move that. Can you see now? It wow, works. that's really cool. Yeah, and I just, oh, I'm running out of table space here. But I just keep, now I could do it to fill the whole, the whole sheet, but what I don't want to do is you have spent 10 minutes just watching me draw, because that would be a little bit boring, wouldn't it? But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a good look at this and think, hmm, let me have a look at it. What do I think it's going to be? Oh, do you know what? I've turned mine round, because you need to do that, you know, have a look at your shape from all different angles. If I do it this way, I can see something. I'll get my pen so you can see what I'm doing. Something jumped out of me. So, are you ready? This is what I'm seeing. Right. There we go. I don't know if you can start to see something. You're probably seeing it upside down at the moment because I'm just drawing it. But um, I'm going to do a bit of noise under there. Does it look fierce enough? Probably. Let's hope so. So if I just quickly draw around this outline. So what I've actually done. Now we could if I turn it around. I've actually you could say it's a, a dragon, a wolf. I don't know, but now I could draw the other faces, and I have done one a bit earlier, just so you could see. Oh wow! So it does. Um, it's it's exciting, isn't it? But what I love about it is, first of all, try and work out why from my square, doing what I did, now it tessellates because actually. It's totally irregular. So what, why can I tessellate with no gaps, no overlaps? So, you know, have a think about that. And then you can get, I love art. So then you can get really creative and actually then start to think, what does this irregular shape look like? And then you can draw pictures on it. You could, you could do a different shape on each one. I guess you could make a, I just did all walls. But I guess I could have drawn something else in the other ones as well. So just a little fun activity with tessellation, but in a classroom, how lovely would that look um, for some display? So, so just, yeah. just remind me, when, when you've got that square at the start, all you do is go from one corner yeah. to the next corner. That's correct. In a shape yeah. and you do that twice. Do that twice, yeah. And all of the, um, all of the, uh, instructions are in our handout that comes out afterwards so um so yeah so you can you can follow the instructions there and uh that sounds like hours of yeah. fun to me fiona <laughs> it's uh, i love it maths and art coming together how lovely um <laughs> get really creative so that's good so we've done this test late so i think gosh I said 40, 45 minutes and we've come to the end of that time. So I'm just going to say thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the activity and the handout explains all of it. So have a go in the classroom or take it home. You know that. Um, but I'm going to pass you to Ben, who's just going to do a final um, thank you. Yep. Thank you so much. We're really, really impressed with your interaction as well. There were some really interesting conversations going on there. I'm, being a being a teacher, well, I used to be a teacher. I know how many different activities can come from, you know, what we've started here today. So feel free, teachers, to kind of let your creative juices flow, and um, and well done, students, for all your hard work this afternoon. I hope you enjoy some nice weather this uh, when you when you finally leave school. <laughs> and apologies for my dog barking, but there we go. <laughs> I had a delivery. So. <laughs> But um, yeah, have lots of fun and look out for our summer challenge as well, because there's loads more fun activities in there for you to have a go at. So yeah, have a good rest of the term. Thank you. Thank you.